things that you need to do in After Effects before you can get started on any project. You need to create the project, import footage into the project, then create a composition that serves as a container for the footage. Each piece of footage that you import becomes an individual layer in your composition. You can then work with those layers to add effects. In this lesson, we'll discuss how to create a project, import footage, import Photoshop or other layered file types, create a composition, work with composition settings, work with layers, and preview your work in After Effects. By definition, a project in After Effects is a file that stores all references to all footage that you use in the project. A project also contains compositions. Compositions are containers that are used to combine footage and add effects. When you first open After Effects, you'll see this dialog box. This is the welcome screen. From here, you can open a new composition, open a project, or find help and support. For the purpose of this course, click Close. To create a new project, go to File, New, New Project. If you don't have a project open or don't open a project on the welcome screen, After Effects automatically creates a new project for you. The default name is untitledproject.aep. Once you've created a new project, go to File, Import, File. In order to start a new project, you must import footage into it. All projects contain footage. When you click File, Import, File, you'll see the Import File dialog box. Locate the footage that you want to import and then click the Import or Open button. You'll see a thumbnail preview of your footage and the project panel on the left. You can import all kinds of footage into After Effects. This includes audio files, layered files from Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator, images, video clips, other After Effects projects, and projects from Premiere Pro. After Effects is not an audio editing program by any means. However, you can use some audio effects in After Effects to control the sound and quality. In addition, you can also loop audio clips in your compositions if the composition is longer than your audio track. There are two ways to loop audio. The first is to create a duplicate audio layer and then set the duplicate layer to start playing when the source layer ends. This is a lot of work and there is an easier way. If you need to loop audio, right click on the audio clip in the project panel. Then select Interpret Footage Main. In the Other Options section, you can set the audio clip to loop as many times as you'd like. Click OK when you're finished. Once you import your footage for a project, you'll create a new composition. We'll talk about that later in this lesson. However, for now it's important to understand that a composition combines all the footage that you import. That said, if you want to import a Photoshop or Illustrator file that contains several layers that have not been merged or flattened, you'll need to import that file as a composition. To do this, go to File, Import, File. Navigate to the file and then click on it to select it. In the Import As field, select Composition. Click the Import or Open button. You'll then see the footage in the project panel. When you import footage into After Effects, After Effects creates a reference link to the source file. It doesn't actually import the footage. This allows project sizes to remain small. You can go to File, Dependencies, Find Missing Footage if After Effects notifies you that it cannot find a source file. If you've moved the file, you'll need to relocate it for After Effects. Once you've created a project and imported all the footage for that project, you're ready to create a composition. A composition contains all your footage, as well as the animation, layering, and effects. It has both temporal, or time, dimensions and special dimensions. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. To create a composition, go to the Project panel. Control or Command click on all of your footage items. Next, drag the footage items to the Timeline panel. You'll then see the new composition from Selection dialog box. The dimensions used for the new composition will be based on the footage you selected. You can change the dimensions to match any of the footage that you have selected. Click OK when you're finished. The footage items that you selected to include the composition are shown as layers in the Timeline panel. If you look at the Timeline panel, you'll see two layers labeled 1 and 2. The lengths of the footage that you add to a composition may vary. 
For example, you may have footage that lasts 1 minute and 10 seconds and another that lasts 1 minute and 50 seconds. If you want, you can change the length of the entire composition to match the length of one piece of footage. To do this, go to Composition, Composition Settings. You'll then see the Composition Settings dialog box. Go to the Duration field and enter the desired duration for the composition. Click OK when you're finished. Layers are the elements that build a composition. As we discussed in the last section, any footage that you add to a composition becomes a new layer. Layers are stacked on top of each other. The order follows the stacking order in the composition panel. Just as with Photoshop or other photo editing programs, you can work with one layer in a composition. The changes you make to that layer will not affect other layers in the composition. You can also use a composition as a layer in another composition. This is called nesting. Now that you've created a composition and by doing so created layers, you can now add animation and effects to those layers. Let's start out by learning how to add an effect to a layer by adding a radial blur effect. To do so, select a layer in your composition. Next, go to the Effects and Presets panel. This is on the right side of the window. In the search box within the panel, type radial blur and then hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then see the effect. Click on the effect to select it and then drag it onto your layer in the Timeline panel. The effect is then applied and the Effect Controls panel then opens on the left side of the window. Now you can customize your effect. Drag the number in the Amount field to increase or decrease the amount of the effect. If we look at the Composition panel, we can see our before and after when we increase the effect. In the Composition panel, we can also move the center point of the blur by dragging on the center crosshair. If we go back to the Effect Controls panel, we can also choose the type of radial blur, Spin or Zoom. Let's choose Zoom. Let's say we want to adjust the exposure of this layer to make it brighter. To do that, we'll add an Exposure effect. Go back to the Effects and Presets panel. This time, type Exposure in the search box. Drag the Exposure effect to the layer in the Timeline panel. Take a look at the Effect Controls panel. Once again, you can customize the effect. Take time to explore the different ways you can customize the effect to get a feel for what it can do. If you want to undo a change you made, simply go to Edit Undo or press Command or Control Z on your keyboard. As you already know, layers are stacked one upon another. The image or video that is on top of the stack is the one that you see when you look at your composition. For example, our composition contains two layers. There is another layer beneath the layer that is displayed. You can move, rotate, scale, and change the opacity for any layer in a composition by changing the layer's properties. You can do this to change the way the layer appears with the other layers. We're going to reposition and rotate this layer, then change the opacity. To do this, go to the Timeline panel. Find the layer that you want to work with, and then click the triangle beside the layer number. When you click on the triangle, you'll see Transform. Next, click the triangle beside Transform. You can now change the anchor point, position, scale, rotation, or opacity by mousing over the values in yellow, then dragging to the right to increase the values, or to the left to decrease them. If you look at our composition in the Composition panel, you can now see the second layer, as well as the transformation we made by changing the layer's properties. The blending modes in After Effects are the same as they are in Photoshop. Blending modes determine how one layer reacts with another. The blending modes in After Effects are found by going to Layer Blending Mode. To apply a blending mode, select a layer in the Timeline panel. The blending mode you apply will affect how that layer reacts to the layers beneath it. Take the time to select a layer in your Timeline panel and then apply several different blending modes to see what effect they have on your composition. We have a background layer and then an image layer. To apply a blending mode, we're going to select the top layer and then select the blending mode. This is Darken. Multiply. Color Burn. Linear Burn,
lighten, screen, overlay, difference, and luminosity. Being able to preview your work will be important to you as you use After Effects. You may want to see an animation played out or make sure that effects you've added meet your expectations. There are several methods that you can use to preview your work in After Effects. The first is Standard Preview. To use Standard Preview, go to the Timeline panel and deselect all layers. The video switch should be visible for all layers that you want to preview. The video switch looks like an eye. It appears with each layer and is found in the first column. You can click to select or deselect the video switch. Next, move the playhead to the beginning of the time ruler. To play and preview your composition, press the spacebar. You can also press the spacebar to stop playback. Just keep in mind that standard preview playback can be slower than the actual frame rate. The other method you can use to preview your work is RAM preview. RAM Preview will use the RAM on your computer to play the preview with audio. It will play it to match the frame rate of the composition. You can use RAM Preview to play footage in the Timeline panel as well as the Layer and Footage panels. To use RAM Preview, go to the Timeline and select the layers that you want to preview. Make sure the video switch appears beside both layers. Next, drag the playhead in the Timeline to the beginning of the Time Ruler. Click the RAM Preview button in the Preview panel on the right side of the window. You can also go to Composition, Preview, RAM Preview. You'll see a green bar that shows which frames are cached to RAM. When all frames are cached to RAM, your preview will play. To stop playback, hit the space bar. <laughs> <laughs>